Hey guys, welcome to Incente, the YouTube channel dedicated specifically to beginner and intermediate go players to help them get better at the game. So I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about fighting. Because I've come to realize that I sort of stink at it. <laughs> I played a game with uh, a friend that I've uh, met online, and it was a great game, really, really fun. <clears throat> but he said that my strategy and tactics was on par with maybe a 5Q, but my fighting skills are like 15Q, so I'm balancing out around a 10 to 12Q. Which, I can sort of see that. I've never really felt good at reading, and I feel like a lot of my attacks are sort of crude and they usually don't work. I've also heard that learning how to make these attacks, and it's called Tasuji, these skillful moves in a local situation, will help out your game immensely, and sometimes that's the only thing keeping a player from uh, rising through the ranks. Um, I remember reading in a book it said, like, the player's rank is determined solely by its reading ability, which is interesting. In spirit of that, I want to give you guys a video uh, from a book that I read called Tsuji. I have its link in the description below. Learning how to play Go without learning how to fight, attack, use Tsuji, and read is sort of the same thing as trying to be good at boxing without learning how to punch. So I'm going to learn how to punch. Let's get started. Alright, the first and probably one of the simplest Tsujis to learn, the Knight's Move Tsuji. So, take this situation. It is Black's move, and Black wants to capture these two white stones. White was sad to be a butt, tried to cut Black off, and if Black doesn't capture these stones, his position is kind of wrecked. So, what can you do? you think that White probably read this out and thought that there's no danger for him in extending here, but there actually is. Um, so with these problems, I'm going to show you the first one, and I'm going to show you how the Knight's Move to Suji works, and then I'm going to give you some sample problems which you can solve in your head on your own, and then, of course, I'll give you the answers in this video. So take this for example. Um, if you're a beginner Go player, you're an intermediate, you definitely know about Nets. So that seems like a decent way to try to capture this, right, and catch it in a net. Problem with that is white can squeeze out like this. There's an Atari, so you have to defend. There's an Atari, so you have to defend. There's an Atari, you have to defend. And now white's broken free. So black clearly can't play this way. So when you have this situation with these two uh, stones, your enemy stones, that sort of have these free spaces and one extra liberty, where a net doesn't work, the knight's move to Suji is the way to go. So check this out. If you move here, that actually captures the group. It seems ridiculous, right? But it actually does. So let's try to have white escape. Let's try to have white go this direction. Strong block. That doesn't work anymore. And now, white can't escape. The knight's move gave the black group the strength to make basically a stronger net and seal them in. Now let's try to have white maybe do something clever, go this way, right? No problem, black just turns. Even if white goes here to try to escape, right? That's Atari, and that's Atari. So, no problems last hope white might have is out this way, but you see we run into the same problem. Atari, and nothing. So this knight's move to Suji is really strong for capturing um, stones that are just one liberty short of being caught in a net, uh, like this situation. And you can see white can't really do any special jumps or anything either. Right, so his position is completely sealed with this one to Suji. It's pretty awesome. Alright, so... Let's start the first problem. Um, so here we see the board position, and it is White's move. 
and clearly white will get captured if it doesn't do something about these three black stones. Um, unfortunately, black has a ladder breaker set up right here, which means that the ladder won't work. Is there any way for white to capture these three stones and save his group? Um, and of course, since this is on the knight's move to Suji, you're going to be using the knight's move to Suji in the answer. So pause the video, um, look at the problem, try to do it all on your head, because that's what's going to give you better reading ability. Um, and start the video when you're ready. Alright, so hopefully we've had some time to think about it. And now there's really two knights to Suji's, right? So we see that black has these two open areas and a direct forcing play in one direction or the other won't work. White tries to do this, black has the Atari, and he's fine. If white goes up here, right, as I said before, he has the ladder breaker, and he's fine. So the two knights move to Suji's, right? Are the knights move from one of these stones, either here, or here. Let's try this one. Um, this one we see doesn't actually work because black still has the Atari over here. Um, and white can try to make a co out of it, but problem is even if he recaptures, black still links up. So that doesn't work. And this is just too weak a stone. So that knight's move to Suji doesn't work. So how about the knight's move to Suji from the weaker stone? Now at first in your head, you might be thinking that doesn't work either because black still has the Atari. However, once black strengthens this Atari, there are now no escape routes for white stones. Black can go here, white goes up, goes here, white goes up, and that captures the lot. So, you see the knights move to Suji from the weaker stone, the stone that needs the most help, was the right call to make. Um, and that, in one move, unconditionally captures black. This isn't like if, if black plays wrong, he'll get captured, and if he plays right, he'll win. This is unconditional. Alright, so next problem. It is black, or white's move, sorry, and it needs to capture these black stones. Um... So, it doesn't want to get split up, so it wants to connect these black stones. And we see also that the ladder doesn't work, right? Because once again, black has that stupid, annoying ladder breaker there, <clears throat> and we can't use the ladder to help us. So, white needs to find another way. So, pause the video, uh, check it out, find the knight's move to Suji that will save this group. Um, and examine other options, see what works, see what doesn't. Try to do as much of it in your head as possible. Alright, uh, unpause the video when you're ready. Okay, so let's analyze this, right? Now you might be thinking, you know, why can't white play this net? It doesn't seem like white is that weak anywhere. However, if black tries to shoot through, black has this really nice Atari right here, unfortunately. And when white connects, black Ataris, and now black Ataris again, and black is set free. So, unfortunately, even though it looked pretty strong, uh, white has that weakness there. So let's check out our two knights move to Suji's, right? So, to Suji from this side, we see doesn't work, because it because the same problem still happens. If black tries to go through here, and white blocks, black has this Atari. And then, black is free. So follow our principle of play the knights move to Suji from the side that needs the help. Right, we know that this side is weakest, it needs the help. So we play the knight's move to Suji over here. Now we see that if black tries to shoot through and play this Atari, the Atari doesn't go anywhere because he can't re-Atari that stone. So black will just get captured, like so. And once again, that's unconditional. There's no way for black to stop that as long as white plays that knight, the correct knight's move to Suji. So that was really cool, actually. I really like that. Um, there's a few more that I'm going to show you, and I think you'll like what you see. Alright, next to Suji. So this one's called the Loose Ladder to Suji. This works for situations that are close to the edge of the board, um, where 
the regular ladder unfortunately just doesn't work and you need just a little tweak in the gameplay um, to capture the stones. So if we check this out, black would really love to capture these white stones. Really would love to because that would connect his group over to here, stop this one from running for his life, um, kind of make his position less awful. It would be nice. It would be really nice. Um, but how do you do it? Um, you can see that the ladder, which is what most people try to look at when they can try to capture something, doesn't work. Because white has this, again, <laughs> really annoying ladder breaker right there. And now black has those three stones captured, and then this is awful. Um, white has, like, awesome center potential now. And even if black connected, you know, white can attack from this side. It's just not nice. It's really not nice. So, how does white capture them? Or, how does, sorry, how does black capture these stones in one fell swoop? Well, the answer actually lies in something called the loose ladder. Um, this is a ladder where you essentially do everything that you would normally do with a ladder, except it's close to the edge of the board, so you push the group to the edge and leave it with one extra liberty on the top somewhere. But, because none of your stones are singular, they can't be double atari because the ladder doesn't extend far enough. I'll show you, probably better to show by example. So this is the loose ladder. You see that if white tries to escape here, that's Atari. 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 And Atari all the way down, and he's done, right? So let's see how white, if white responds the other way. So let's see if white just goes up like that. Black's like, all right, no problem, bro. I will just do the same thing, but in a different order. Um, and black once again guides white to the edge of the board. And remember, white can't do anything around here because as soon as it tries, that's Atari. So it can't take advantage of this one stone because it'll die. So that is what's called the loose ladder. Um, definitely look for it, because at times when a ladder doesn't work, and you have stuff close to the edge of the board, this can capture them unconditionally. Alright, let's do some problems. Okay, so this problem is sick. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, this isn't Black's move, capture the three white stones. This is White's move, capture the black stone. Um, <laughs> when I saw this, I was like, really? Like, that? that's possible? Apparently it is, with the loose ladder. So, pause the video, try to figure out the loose ladder sequence, remember, stay in your heads, that will work, and if it works, uh, for this sequence. Uh, pause the video, and come back when you're ready. Okay, so, the loose ladder is right here. It's a shoulder hit on this stone that will guide him towards the edge of the board and leaves him with one liberty on the top. So we can see that if black goes here, this is Atari, right? And then if black goes here, this is just a normal ladder. So that clearly won't work. Black's only hope is to go up this way. But white's like, I that's fine. Once again, same moves, different order, right? Black can't take advantage of anything here because as soon as he tries, that's Atari. Atari, and everything's normal again. And if Black tries to pop out this way, it's the exact same thing. That's Atari. Okay, so, once again, it's a normal ladder. But the most interesting uh, response is if Black just still doesn't get it and keeps descending downwards. Now, yeah, there's a lot of pitfalls here, and this is probably what you guys ran into a problem with when trying to calculate this out, is what happens when Black gets moved down over here, right? So... We can see that white, now the, remember, the key here is for white to keep his stones in sets of two, so that they can't be atari like they would usually happen if a ladder wasn't working right. So white keeps his stones in forms of two, pushes it down to the edge of the board, black redirects him this way, and you see that that's okay because this whole cut thingy is guarded. So black is forced to come here, white does the same thing, remember sets of two, right? White guides him down to the edge. Both the stones are in sets of two. This is protected. Black has nowhere to go. 
and he can't take advantage of anything because captured. And that is the answer to that problem. Pretty cool, right? So you can take even a stone that looks to be as strong as this. And if you calculate the ladder to Suji outright, the loose ladder, it can help. All right, problem number two for the loose ladder. Black to play, capture these cutting stones. Once again, we see the ladder does not work. Right, we can calculate that out pretty easily by now. So we're gonna need to find some other way to capture these. Um, give the video a pause once again. Make sure that you've calculated out. So this move looks like it might work. It looks like it might work. This looks like the loose ladder that we were talking about, right? Because if white goes up, Atari, 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 and captures. Unfortunately, this is a hidden mistake because if white pushes first and black tries to do this, black runs into a huge problem with this group. There is no way to save that, and white lives. So if you're looking at that and thinking that worked, pause the video again and uh, try to think of some other way you can use the loose ladder. It's a little bit different. <laughs> Alright, so this involves first making a forcing ladder move upwards and then playing the loose ladder. I'll show you guys how it works. So black plays here. Okay, so white first, or I'm sorry, black first plays the Atari, forcing white up here, then black plays the loose ladder. This is so cool, because if white tries to escape, we see the Atari thing again. And this time, black can just run him down over here and capture him, because he's got that stone right there. So, we'll see it again. And this is the loose ladder. Now, let's say white pushes first. Black's like, fine, fine by me, bro. Uh, now, you still have two liberties left, which means that you can't take an advantage of any of these things because any move will be Atari. So white has to keep going, and going, and going. And that, my friends, is all she wrote. So that actually seemed easy, but it was actually pretty tricky because you had to like sort of wrap white around you and then bring it over. So these loose ladder tsujis can be in many shapes and many sizes. It can be pretty unconventional, so don't think that like, oh, like there's very few situations I can use this. I, I've never used it, like consciously, because I just learned about this, but I feel like it can be used a lot in your games. All right, so the last tsuji I'm gonna show you guys today is called the slapping tsuji. Um, this one's great, and this actually seems super useful because I realized I've made this mistake a lot of times. Um, I'm sure you guys have made this mistake too, especially for beginners. You've got like a, a group of two stones here, and you realize that... Uh, let's use the edit tool. Right, you realize that you can't play here. Because if you do, then white does this, and then those two stones get captured. So, if you're anything like me, I'm like, ha, I'll simply play here instead. That way, if we, if white tries to capture, then I've broken free. And white can't do it this way, because the ladder doesn't work, because then I Atari him. So, I'm here thinking that I've totally solidified myself, when in fact, I left myself open for the slap. So, let me show you guys the slap right now. That's the move, this attachment. So we see that black can't, clearly can't do this because this is Atari, right? Black tries to fill in, this is Atari, Atari, and then runs him out and captures. Um, and black can't escape because then there's the cut. So I mean, if we're trying to capture these stones, that still doesn't work. So this attachment forces black to connect somehow, some way. And this way doesn't work, as we've seen, because of that Atari, and then you run them all the way down. What about this one? Well, remember the loose ladder? How we would just wrap around and force him back into our own stones? It's exactly what we do again. So do it again. 
and keep wrapping down. Notice we black can't play here because it'll get captured, so he has to come down. We fill in. Block, and that's Atari. And those stones are gone. So this is the slapping Tsuji, it's called, and that is for like a group of a few stones that are that think it can make an escape because the ladder doesn't work, when in fact, they're kind of dead. All right, problem time. So black to play, here's the situation. Black needs to connect these stones, so he doesn't have the Dane Cook of Go games. So how does he do it? Pause the video and check it out. All right, so the answer is, of course, the slapping to Suji, which involves a connection right there. Uh, once again, we see that... Oops. Alternate, please. Okay, once again, we see that white can't escape because, I mean, that just captures the group outright. We see that white can't escape this way because that's Atari. Atari and capture. And then we see that white can't do this uh, as well because black can simply turn and keep strengthening. And I mean, nothing white does here can work as we've seen, even trying to get at it from a different way, and white gets captured. So that slapping to Suji is really powerful. Um, and it can really help uh, get your stones out of a tight spot and get your opponent's stones in more of a tight spot. All right, last problem of the last Tsuji. So hopefully after this, you guys will have three new tactics and attacks under your belt, and you can use them in your games. So this one's pretty weird too, actually. Um, this is the play, and Black wants to capture those three stones. Uh, how does he do it? Now you might think that like the slapping Tsuji wouldn't work. Um, maybe it doesn't. I'm not going to say, but pause the video and try to calculate out for yourself. Um, does it work? Uh, which way do you go, and how do you respond once white is forced over in this direction? All right, hopefully you've had time to think about it. And so, as we know, we know the slapping to Suji, so we can play that attachment right there. Question is, does it work? Now, let's examine, I mean, the normal response, right? This obviously doesn't work. I don't know why I even keep showing this, because definitely doesn't work. White can play here, here, and now just has a standard ladder straight to the edge of the board, which is no problem. White will die. So let's do the actual more interesting one, which is this one. So white's still going to make the turn. Black goes there. White strengthens its group, right? Now it has two stones doing this. Um, I'm sorry, black strengthens his group, white extends. Now we can see that if black kept doing this, he would actually start surrounding himself. And if black were to start this ladder right now, right, this is horrifying because that has, white still has this one extra liberty where it can't get captured and white's fine. So how does black continue with this? Well, the answer is the net. So this is really cool. So Black simply is like, all right, I'm done. I'm done with this. I'm going to play the net right now, right here, right now. We see that White can't break through the net because now that's Atari and those are captured. Uh, White can't do some other weird shenanigans because that's still Atari and that's captured. Sorry, let me go through that a little slower. Right here. And white can't do some weird cross-cutting thing, because black will just descend. And he's just one liberty short. And white can't do anything outside of this way, because this cut might seem like, oh no, now I've got like Ataris everywhere, right? Thing is, this only has two liberties left. So if white tries to do something, Black just keeps wriggling out of the way, right? Here, wriggling out of the way. And then that's the Atari. So 
wax uh, stones on the outside could actually just get out of any attack White tried to throw at it. So Slapping Tsuji managed to come out ahead, even in a situation that was completely open on this side of the board. And that's it. So hopefully you guys learned some stuff, learned some attacks, learned some punches, and look out for these in your game. See, the idea is to get so familiar with these shapes and these tasujis that it's like clock, like automatic. Like you see something, it doesn't matter what situation it's in, you can capitalize on it. Hopefully it helped. And I definitely think I want to make more lessons of these kinds of things. They're really fun. Like they're really cool. Um, so give me a like, comment, be sure to subscribe for more of these. Let me know what you think. Uh, stronger players, if there are any, any other ideas or corrections or anything, be sure to let me know. Um, and that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys on the grid.